Today I have some of the biggest stories of the year so far rolled up into one video. I'm talking new CPU tech that will revolutionize the entire industry. AMD's RX 10,000 looks to be a ground up change that you won't believe. And before all that, is ray tracing in trouble? Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. It's news time and first up for today, is ray tracing beginning to take a back seat? It might be the case as Battlefield 6 just proudly announced that they have no plans to add ray tracing to the game. But before I get to that story, I have something that ties into it. Specifically, Battlefield 6 recently released the system requirements for the game. And as you can see, it's not too bad. Video memory only requires 6 gigabytes, system memory just 16 gigabytes, for the GPU, we're talking 2060, 5600 XT, or Intel's ARC A380. I mean, given the kind of specs we've been seeing on major releases, this looks quite a bit better. Still not amazing, but not too bad. Though of course, the TPM 2.0 requirement is understandably frustrating to some, but the rest is fairly refreshing. And the reason appears to be because Battlefield 6 is not including ray tracing, which is of course a stark contrast from Battlefield 5 and definitely a big change from some newer games that require ray tracing. But the really telling part isn't so much that they don't have ray tracing, it's how they're essentially advertising it as a bonus. And of course, in a lot of cases, ray tracing very much isn't worth the performance hit, but we never really hear this from game executives. As you can see right down here, the studio technical director says, quote, No, we are not going to have ray tracing when the game launches, and we don't have any plans in the near future for it either. He goes on to state, That was because we wanted to focus on performance. We wanted to make sure that all of our effort was focused on making the game as optimized as possible for the default settings and the default users. So we just made the decision relatively early on that we weren't going to do ray tracing and again, it was mostly so that we could focus on making sure it was performance for everyone else. Talk about a complete 180 in the way this is talked about. Now, they somewhat left the door open to add it way later, but it's clearly not a priority. Could this be a sign of things to come or is this it's just one company's decision. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Next up, while it's getting easier to find GPUs at MSRP, let's be honest, they're still way too high. So what if you don't even want to pay that? Well, that's where today's sponsor comes in, Jawa. The premier online marketplace made specifically to put PC parts into the hands of gamers at a great price. Whether that's CPUs, memory, motherboards, and yes, even GPUs. Like this Sapphire Nitro 7900GRE for just $520, or this Founders Edition 3070Ti for $295. Now, if that's still too much for you, no worries, because Jawa has a trade-in program where you can get money for your old CPU or GPU to help you get the upgrade. If you're more looking for a fully built PC because you're not into building it yourself, I definitely understand that. Luckily, Java also has a ton of pre-built gaming PCs from boutique sellers. I'm talking tons of models at every price point, so you can get exactly what you're looking for, and they really have some nice looking ones. At the end of the day, Java was built by gamers for gamers, which is exactly what we need more of, so visit them down in the description below. And next up, a revolutionary new CPU innovation is coming that will change everything. I mean, this will massively affect gaming, day-to-day -day tasks, it's huge, at least if Intel can pull it off. And yes, you heard that right. Intel is actually the one at the forefront of this design change. We've gotten so used to drastic changes coming from AMD at this point that it's surprising to see Intel enter the mix. Though obviously they have been at the forefront of CPU technology for decades, but their dominance clearly stifled that for years before Ryzen kicked them in the face, which once again points to the importance of competition. Necessity breeds innovation, and Intel's decline is forcing them to do just that. So so what am I talking about here? Well, Intel just filed a patent for something called software-defined supercores. And wow, is it interesting. As you can see here, it says, the concept is to let two or more CPU cores work together as if they were a single, larger core. 
Instead of building oversized single-threaded cores that waste power, Intel suggests splitting a program into blocks of code that can run in parallel across multiple physical cores, while still finishing instructions in the right order. To the operating system, it looks like one core, but in reality, it's several cores cooperating. Now, this may sound simple in concept, but the entire reason we use multi-threading is to get around the limitation of a single core. The catch is that not all programs benefit equally. Only tasks that can be split into independent pieces can really take advantage of it. Balancing those pieces across cores is tricky, because if one thread takes much longer than the other, the remaining cores sit idle waiting. On top of that, multiple threads often compete for the same memory or cache, and the synchronization needed to keep everything consistent can cancel out the speed gains. These are the kinds of challenges that make efficient multi-threading so difficult. But if Intel has found a way around this to take tasks that normally won't work well with multi-threading and split them up while finishing at the same time would be huge. It would mean that games could easily benefit from way more than eight cores. It would mean that day-to-day -day tasks could become way faster. It could have smaller, more efficient cores doing what only the much faster cores can do now. I mean, this would seriously change everything. And the fact that they felt good enough to patent it likely means that they actually have something that works. And lastly for today, AMD's RX 10,000 GPUs are a ground up change so big that it could eliminate NVIDIA from the high end altogether. In a recent video, I went over this leak from Kepler, where he claimed that AMD's next gen RDNA 5 or UDNA whatever is set to come with up to 96 CUs, which was a stark contrast from the huge amount of CUs claimed from Moore's Law is Dead. Well, we now have another prominent leaker entering the mix that turns the 96 CU count from bad to unbelievable. As you can see right down here, this very well-known chip hell leaker claims that AMD has changed the structure so much that one CU now has a whopping 128 stream processors. For those who don't know, RDNA 4 is currently structured where one workgroup processor is made up of two CUs and one CU is made up of 64 cores or stream processors. So instead of 96 CUs being 6,144 cores, it's now an unreal 12,288. For comparison, the 9070 XT comes with 4,096 cores. So if this is right, AMD's next gen will get not double, but three times the amount of cores as the 9070 XT, which would mean that even if AMD doesn't see a boost in clocks or any kind of boost in per core performance, next gen will completely decimate the 5090 and almost certainly any kind of 6090 as well. This is so big that even the leaked mid-tier die has far more cores than the 9070 XT. Ultimately, if this is true, it would seriously mean that AMD could soon leave NVIDIA in the dust. So while that does it for today, are you ready for RX 10,000 or are you more pumped for Intel's new CPU tech? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Jawa down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.